untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl game the video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-green Volo Guide to Monsters deck as requested by my supporters on Patreon. And this deck's a ton of fun. Volo's a 4-mana 3-2. Says whenever we cast a creature spell that doesn't share a creature type with a creature we control or a creature card in our graveyard, copy that spell. And a copy of a creature spell of course becomes a token. So it's very important when building a Volo deck that we diversify our creature types as much as possible. And the best way to illustrate that is by taking a look at the stats here. So as you can see, a ton of different creature types and mostly one-offs. There's a few exceptions. For instance, we've got uh, two one-mana elves, which uh, wouldn't be able to be copied if we already have one in play. And then there's two elementals because there's two very good ones in Moldrifter and Risen Reef. And I guess Insect, there's the Haywire Might at one mana, and then Hornet Queen later up the curve. So there's very few exceptions to the rule, otherwise if you have a Volo out, every creature you cast will be copied, and that can provide a ton of value as you can imagine. I've split up the deck into a few different categories, starting with the Miscellaneous. These are some of the few non-creature spells in the deck, where we have Time Use Safekeeping for protection, Negate and Counter Spell, just as ways to maybe stop Sweeper effects, and then the Boots for Hexproof. We've got Vivian, Champion of the Wilds, to help us play creatures at instant speed, so that can maybe play a Volo end of turn, so it doesn't expose it to sorcery speed removal. And then we also have Asika's Chariot to copy tokens, since of course Volo makes creature tokens, which we then get to maybe copy with Asika's Chariot. Penharmonicon to double ETB effects, since there's a ton of those in the deck. And then a Tamyo Completed Sage is also fun, since if our opponent answers Volo, we can get it back with a minus X ability if we leave Volo in the graveyard, and then can tap opposing creatures down, eventually maybe make Tamyo's Notebook as well. And the Great Henge, of course, an awesome card draw engine in any creature strategy. And then we've got a few categories dedicated to ramp, starting with Elvish Mystic, Gilded Goose, and Lenor Elves. Then we've got a few sorceries as well, since it's difficult to avoid having a lot of elves otherwise, since of course a lot of the mana creatures are elves. But we've got Explore into the north as sorceries. Then a Lotus Cobra as our only snake can also add a ton of extra mana. Mana Weft Sliver the only sliver as another ramp card. And then a Battlement as a wall can also be nice if we play later with Volo out as we'll get two copies that both make two mana. And then the Innkeeper can gain some life, make some treasure. We've got Gross Spiral as another ramp card. Merleaf Pixie as the only fairy. And then a few ramp artifacts with Arcane Signet, Cold Seal Heart, Guardian Idol, Mindstone, and Ornithopter as the only Ornithopter in the deck. And then at 3 mana we've got a bit more ramp with Cultivate, Jewel Thief as a Cat Rogue that also makes a treasure token. We've got the Fungus here that also makes a token that can tap for 1 mana of any color. The Topiary Stomper, a plant dinosaur to help us find an extra land. Risen Reef, as we mentioned, one of the two elementals in this deck, but Risen Reef has great synergy with Volo, since if we get a copy, the second Risen Reef will trigger twice, so that's potentially three additional cards right away. And then Uro, an Elder Giant that can also find additional lands. And then Palladium Mirror to make two mana. Cultivator will find an untapped basic land when it enters. And then Simulacrum will find a tap land, and when it dies we get to draw. And then taking a look at the next couple categories, these are just uh, remaining creatures in the deck. We've got the Haywire Might as one of the two insects as a way to deal with artifacts or enchantments. Since I'm not playing with Reclamation Sage, since there would be a bit too much overlap with the elves otherwise, but uh, not too many insects. And then we've got Fibblethub to draw, Mana War to bounce, Illuminator to play creatures of the top, Prowler can help us discount our creatures and other spells, Got Corsair Crufix to play Lands of the Top and gain some life. Then Organ Hoarder, the only zombie in the deck to provide a bit of extra card advantage. Typically you don't want to play effects that mill additional cards into your graveyard in a Volo deck since there's a chance that you mill a creature type that you already have in hand, preventing you from getting an extra copy. But we also have a lot of exile effects between the Illuminator and the Prowler. We have ways of exiling cards from our graveyard to still help enable Volo if one of those types ended up in our graveyard. And then, of course, as we saw, we don't have a ton of overlap to begin with. Then a Spark Double is potentially the most exciting card in this deck, since it's the only illusion in the deck. So if we cast it with Vol out, we get to copy it, and we get to copy a legendary creature removing its legendary type. So now all of a sudden we could find ourselves with three Volos in play, and then whenever we play a creature we'll get four copies total. So that's incredibly powerful if we can pull that off. Then a Reservoir Kraken just to make a nice 6-6 with a bit of built-in protection. 
Then there's the Vizier of the Menagerie to also play creatures off the top of our deck. Then Moldrifter, the second elemental, and this one's awesome too since we can evoke it for two and a blue. And then with Volo out we get to draw four cards and can also be cast at five mana as a 2-2 flyer. Mesmerizing Benthet can make a few illusion tokens to help play defense. Then the Mind Flayer, the only horror that can steal opposing creatures when it enters. The Dryad's also great, especially multiples, as we now get to give all Sapperlings plus four plus four potentially, making two of them in each upkeep, including the opponent's upkeep. Biogenic Ooze is also great, as we get to make several tokens that all start picking up extra plus one plus one counters. Gear Hulk, another way to add a ton of plus one counters to the team. Workshop War Chief can gain life and maybe leave behind a 4 4 token. Silverback Elder can destroy artifacts or enchantments whenever we cast a creature, maybe gain life for help us ramp. Then the All-Seeing Arbiter also great in multiples as we get to draw and discard while shrinking opposing creatures down. Dream Eater can also give us some interaction, bouncing opposing permanents when it enters and surveilling to find our next big play. There's the Ulvenwald Hydra which can help us ramp when it enters by finding a land. It's also great in multiples as it'll get bigger the more lands we have in play. Junkwinder also an all-star in this deck as it gets a discount from controlling tokens and then whenever a token enters we can keep an opposing creature tapped down for the next turn so it can help us play defense quite nicely. Thorn Mammoth to fight opposing creatures. We've got Hornet Queen, the second insect, makes four 1-1 insect tokens with flying and death touch when it enters the battlefield so it can make an entire army especially with Volo in play. Then there's Palaka Worm to gain 7 life when it enters and draw a card when it dies. And last but not least, Crater Hoof Behemoth, the only beast in the deck to pump our team and often win the game on the spot. And then a mana base doesn't have anything too noteworthy, although I just realized I'm missing Command Tower, so I'll be adding that into the deck list as well. Just have a couple channel lands for added interaction and then Castle Garen Brick to help us ramp. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play facing Adlin, so Mono White Aggro. And uh, Negate, probably not going to be at its best in this matchup. Although Signet plus Spark Double is still tempting, so I think I gotta try. And at least we won't face too much removal in this matchup. So turn 3 Volo, turn 4 Double with Spark Double, and then Moldrifter could be fun. Evoking does indeed count as casting a spell, so will be copied by Volo. And Knight of Grace. And Sanctum can still enter untapped, right on time. Alright, cross our fingers that Volo survives. If they play Adlin, we can still block the 1-1 token at least. It's gonna be an Okatra's Monument to go wide instead. Fair enough. Take two. Okay, let the fun begin. Spark double. Copy Volo. Copy Volo. Play a tap land. And don't need Temple. And next turn we get to play our Hydra. Probably shouldn't even be attacking to play around Wandering Emperor, but I think we'll be okay. Illuminarch triggers Monuments. Counter on Knight. And a Sentinel. Alright, next turn's gonna be a glorious. Opponent is building up an army here. And there are some cards that could get us. The one sided sweepers like Dusk to Dawn come to mind. But uh, I'll be okay if our opponent uh, has one of those. Just wanna get our Volo triggers. Oh yes. And do we have any fancy lands to search up? We can uh, scry here with Temple. Although probably should have waited until after searching up my other lands. That's fine. Can get a castle for a bit of mana acceleration. Then we can get a shock land out of the way and snarl. Can also enter tapped. Well, that was uh, pretty good, I would say. Four hydras for the price of one. And next turn, can't wait to play Moldrifter. Curse of Silence, a bit late to the party, would have been effective on turn two. And then now we'll have shields up on the gates for any shenanigans. 
opponent naming Fibblethup. Good choice. And her opponent explodes. Sadly, didn't completely get to go off with Moldrifter, but you get the idea. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Thassa, Mono Blue, Flicker. Well, at least uh, there's a decent chance we resolve Volo. The boots could come in handy against like a bounce effect. Just need to scry into an untapped land with our temple so we can actually curve out. There we go. And I'll keep another untapped land. Turn to Guardian Idol. And then we can maybe gain a life off Ornithopter with the Innkeeper in play. Mirror made to copy our own idol. Well, now we could also just resolve Volo while the coast is clear. And next turn maybe copy Innkeeper and Ornithopter right away. Opponent gets to have Thassa. Okay, let's get this party started. So Innkeeper, step one. Then play a Mindstone. And I'll just fetch right now. Play Ornithopter. So we've got a nice mana boost. Can already play our Mammoth next turn. And the boots to maybe protect Volo. Ooh, Mind Flare to steal Volo. Yeah, that's uh, not great, but we can at least take it out with a Mammoth. Ooh, and Thassa to flicker Volo, I guess, means even if we kill Mind Flare, they get to keep Volo. The old trick. Alright, so we'll have to kill our own Volo here. If I play Panharmonicon, then let's see, how much mana are we working with? Three, four, five, six, seven. So yeah, I can still play Mammoth and just kill Mind Flare and Volo at once. If this is a 6-6, six, six, it would end up trading. But I uh, have to stop this Mind Flare Thassa combo some way. Do get a bunch of triggers at least. So yeah, I can show that if we fight Mind Flare, we won't get Volo back right away, but uh, a second fight will do it. And our opponent explodes. All right, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Azusa, Mono Green Ramp. This is not going to cut it without green mana. This is better. Got the Mystic for a turn 3 Volo. And this has Triumph to get a couple forests. And uh, unlike your traditional ramp decks, the Azusa deck typically doesn't want to play cards like Elvish Mystic, since it's better off just playing Azusa and then dumping a bunch of lands into play. And then at that point you're unhappy to draw mana creatures. So you'll instead see more sorceries that find lands. Okay, time for Volo, and then... Uh, Next turn we can start copying stuff already. So hoping to dodge a removal effect. There's not that many, but uh, there's a couple of creatures that fight when they enter. Beast Whisper for Cardro instead, and a Provisioner. Fair enough. So probably want to get the Arbiter online as soon as possible to start drawing. And discard a land for now. And what else? Don't know if I need boots. Could still be helpful in giving haste, I suppose. Jewel Thief almost pays for itself. So, yeah. Maybe the boots or still get rid of a land anyway. And I don't think we're attacking with Volo. Opponent's got a 9 mana. 
So they are certainly outramping us. And Kogla, yeah, that's one of those few fight effects to take out Volo. At least we have our double Arbiter in play. Could have also left it in the graveyard to exile with Illuminator. But I'm not sure how the sequencing is going to work out here. Soaring City can bounce Kogla before it gets a chance to destroy Mindstone. Or we can take a different approach. Probably fine to start attacking. And then maybe shrink down Kogla. Alright, I think Boots can go since just gets blown up by the Titan Ape. At this point, Jewel Thief might not be all that interesting anymore. So shrink down Kogla, shrink down Provisioner. And go to damage. Okay, so is it time for Tender Shoot Ride? Or do I keep ramping with Solemn so I can maybe replay Volo and another creature in the same turn? Which I also don't mind, even though Solemn dies to Kogla. Ideally, we would have enough power to take out Kogla, even though they can still bounce a human and make it indestructible, so it's going to be tricky to actually kill. Yeah, I guess we'll ramp with Solemn. And then I can maybe keep Mindstone untapped to draw if they try and kill it. So I'm fine playing a tapped land. Titan of Industry, another way to blow up artifacts and enchantments. Goes after Mindstone, so we'll draw. And a Destiny Spinner. So this Beast Whisper is doing a lot of work. But uh, opponent is down to two cards in hand, so if we get to finally resolve Volo again, we might be able to still take over. They can also activate Destiny Spinner to turn lands into creatures, but they don't have a ton of enchantments in play. And our opponent keeps Kogla back on defense. Now Titan also has Reach, so it can block our double Arbiter duo, although we can still shrink it down to set up a decent attack. So if I were to play Volo, I could copy a Goose or a Pixie, I guess. That's not the worst. So... Double Arbiter could attack. And then we'll need to focus our attention on Titan of Industry. And uh, Junkwinder is pretty useful too. So what to get rid of? We have 0, 2 and 3 at the moment. So maybe Gilded Goose can go. Entering down Titan once at least. And then I can shrink down Kogla as well if I'd like. And then discard. Probably just another land. And shrink down Provisioner. And probably Kogla again. Kogla can pick up humans again, just to trigger Beast Whisper, so they can set that up. But I'm uh, happy to get Volo going again. And get immediate value. And then now the more tokens we have, the easier it is to play Junkwinder, and that can keep the opponent's team locked down. Discard a couple more lands. And that also triggers our Arbiter, so that's pretty fun. So our opponent's got negative power. 
but I'm afraid of what they might have in hand. They could cast all sorts of Eldrazi. Bosejo is fine. Can grab a couple forests. And I guess now Destiny Spinner has an extra enchantment and a Cultivator Colossus. Uh oh. That's uh, potentially very dangerous. Point already has two lands they can put in play. And we'll see how many more they find. This could take a while. But yeah, the Junkwinder is still a way for us to keep Colossus under control. Provisioner makes a bunch of treasure. So they still have seven mana here to cast something else. Cross our fingers that Volo survives. Openwald Hydra. Yeah, that can get another land. Well, we've got our work cut out for us here. Opponent's still making treasure as opposed to food. There's a non-zero chance we can actually kill our opponent next turn since we have 14 in the air. And a cavalier. So they have several reach creatures back now. Alright. Couple more treasures. Ooh, Nykthos. That's 20 devotion. What's their last card? Let it not be something scary, please. Although, as we mentioned, they could use the Kogla trick to pick up a human, replay it. If this is an X spell, we could just be dead. Finale of uh, Devastation, I believe. Awaken the Woods for 20. Wow. Well, that's 20 Provisioner triggers. So it'll probably make a few food tokens now. Just to be safe. Yeah, so we're not going to be killing them out of nowhere now. Well, that was a pretty good turn, I would say. Well, let's see what we can come up with. I'm not loving my chances. Counter spells a bit late to the party. Okay, so Junkwinder is the key here. So whenever a token enters, we can tap a non-land permanent and it doesn't untap. So, I'm gonna get that down probably as soon as possible. And then uh, we'll still be able to play a couple more creatures afterwards. So, we'll lock down the uh, Cultivator Colossus for sure. And then. Let's say Tender Shoot right, since that will trigger Junkwinder again in the opponent's turn as well. Probably the play. We can tap down Kogla. Tap down Hydra. And then haven't played a land yet. I uh, don't think we're attacking with our Arbiters this turn. Just gonna turtle up here. And then Dryan's gonna trigger. Giving us a bunch more tap triggers. So we'll keep Titan locked down. And Cavalier. And two more triggers can go after Destiny Spinner and Provisioner. But uh, yeah, Pwn's got a ton of mana here, so they can certainly do some damage. Draws with Arch. And Olasaurus Shepherd are these elves. Forest Dried. Okay, good. Does mean counter spells not gonna work anymore, but at least it doesn't kill us outright. 
I'm just gonna send in all 20 tokens anyway. Can line up some blocks. And still take 10. Alright, time to tap more stuff. Opponent is at 11, but they have 12 food tokens. They should easily be able to sacrifice them all, which represents 36 life. And I don't think we quite have that much damage, so let's keep more of the scary creatures tapped down. Can Blitz a Warchief. Well, Junkwinder is definitely saving the day here. And then might want to hang on to Soaring City, could also play Organ Hoarder. And then uh, find a few more cards, could have attacked first with Arbiter to see what we pick up. Can discard Counterspell since it's not doing much for us. And uh, I guess we can tap some food tokens here. Opponent's going to sacrifice him. Find silver back. And the gate also doesn't work with Shepherd in play. So we'll just grab a Benthid. Alright, so what do I attack with? Putin does have 10 attackers still, but we can probably get a bit more aggressive now. This seems fine. Ponon did not leave their Crawling Barons untapped. So they'll be sacking some more food. Alright, her opponent had quite the Thanksgiving dinner here. They can use Demolition Fields, which will give us an extra mana, so I don't mind. And that's another food token, which they may sacrifice right away. Opponent had 50. Arbiter gets to draw. Shrink down some of those tokens. And uh, probably don't need Gross Spiral. Although I guess Gross Spiral was probably still worth playing as it essentially only costs one mana here. That's okay. Alright, Pwn's at 1. Well, I guess I should have attacked with these Pixies, but this keeps the game more interesting. So, can play Fibblethip or can keep up Soaring City. Which is maybe uh, safer. So we'll pass. Yeah, I thought we were pretty far from killing them, otherwise I would have gone for a more aggressive attack. But I think we'll be okay. Should maybe tap the treasure tokens now. I 
Right, let's pass this card a couple more lanes, trigger Arbiter more. So that early Arbiter definitely put in some good work. And just to be safe, I'll shrink down the Trample creature in case they have a way of uh, untapping it somehow. Couple more tender shoot triggers. No point in targeting Boseju since it will get exiled and transform, so it's not gonna stay tapped. Alright, let's see what they drew. Remember we cannot use counter spell. But we do have a Soaring City available. Got plenty of blockers for Crawling Barons. Arch can draw. So something like a Crater Hoof Behemoth would still kill us pretty easily. Oh no, why did I have to summon it? Yeah, that's gonna resolve since Shepherd prevents countering. Cannot bounce Shepherd and then counter since we don't have the mana for it. And, uh, yeah, bouncing a single creature is not going to help. GG's. What a game. So it was definitely within our grasp, if we had done the math correctly. On to the next one. We're on the play, facing Vraska, Golgari Queen. Hand seems decent. Got Goose and Battalion for early acceleration. And then if Volo dies, I could also let it go to the graveyard to get back with Tamio. So we're still on track to play turn 3 Volo. And perhaps turn 4, 5 mana Tamio. Everyone gets back Fatal Push. So if they can enable Revolt, they could kill Volo. But they're just gonna take out the Battlement. Uh-oh, there's another removal spell, Trophy, at least at Ramses. So we'll search a land and let Volo go to the graveyard. So we can get it back with Tamiyo at once. So we've got our Volo copy now. Liliana to make us sacrifice it. Alright, that's a lot of answers. But we can still get back on the board with uh, Dryads. Mind Spike missed. Could also replay Volo for 6 mana as opposed to playing Tender Shoots. Yeah, maybe that's still fine. Alright, I guess the opponent's deck is just all removal. Back to the command zone for 8 mana. And don't think Thorn Mammoth is going to be all that useful. So play a Tender Shoot. Scry with Temple. And a Gear Hulk seems fine to keep. And we could minus on a Gilded Goose here. Although then our opponent can still play Vraska, kill Goose. I guess we'll get a token from Tender Shoot. So you know, getting Goose back is actually still helpful against Liliana's Edicts. So now we have a bit of insurance against Vraska and Liliana minus two. Chupacabra just kills Dried. Should have known. We'll see if Liliana pluses. We're empty-handed, but we can still play a Gear Hulk, which will then put counters on Goose to finish off Liliana. It's 
So Liliana's on three. So three counters is enough since uh, Frasca can of course kill the goose still. I guess with Tamyo tapping the Chupacabra, I could have just uh, put counters on the Sapperling instead of the Goose, since the Goose is more helpful in helping us ramp. I'll be back with friends. And black market connections, that's fine. Okay, so I can still replay Volo, keep the Chupacabra tapped down. And smash. And then Tamio can maybe get back a Risen Reef here. Although it's not going to trigger Volo since that's on cast. Opponent's down to six. Gotta kill Volo again. Hero's downfall on Gear Hulk instead. And a Thraxian Arena. Well, they're eventually going to die to those. And the opponent has seen enough since we can just attack with all and then the enchantments would eventually drain them to death. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Alicia who smiles at death, so Mardu aggro. Yeah, our hand has potential. If Elf survives, set up Mir. And that can ramp towards Hydra, even if we're missing blue at the moment. Adversary hits us for two. For now, develop our mana. And if both creatures survive, I could play Hydra. Brutal Cathar will exile the mirror, sadly. Okay, so now Vivian will be under quite a bit of pressure, so I think I prefer Battlements. And then with a land, we can still play Hydra next turn. So, probably fine to block Brutal Cathar. And there's Alicia. One mana left. So possible they have a Swords to Plowshares in hand or some other protection spell, who knows. So we could try Volo, but I won't have the blue mana to protect it, so if I Hydra first, even though we give up our only creature in hand, I would be able to get an extra blue source, and then it's going to be easier to play Volo and protect it. So that's one approach. And then I can get a Temple to Scry. And a Risen Reef would be a decent follow-up to Volo, so I'll keep it. Although it does mean shields down on uh, Negate, of course. Alright, it's gonna be Village Rights end of turn, makes sense. Alicia can get it back. And a Cathars Crusade can certainly go over the top. Okay, I guess we'll uh, get our own synergies online. Volo into Risen Reef. Opponent's gonna be playing creatures in the foreseeable future, so... I don't think I need to keep up Negate necessarily. Two more Risen Reef triggers. Okay, that was pretty good. I'll keep the Hydra on defense. So yeah, that's why Risen Reef is the elemental of choice. That's the great synergy with making a copy and triggering twice. So now we have more mana to redeploy Volo if it gets removed. And we've got some Planeswalkers to deploy, even if they don't have the best synergy with Volo at the moment. Right, Thirst Kicked kills Volo, so we can let it go to the Graveyard, so we can get it back with Tamio perhaps. Ooh, and a Spark Double too. So should be able to play both. Get back Volo. 
And Spark Double to copy it. And uh, yeah, I'll copy one Volo for sure. And then maybe I should diversify and get a Hydra. Even though the Hydra doesn't get doubled right away. And our opponent explodes. All right, I'll take it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing the partners, a red green beatdown. So our hand's a little soft to an aggressive start, although cultivates nice, can ramp into Volo or just kind of play a slower game where we organ hoard and maybe try and ramp out our henge. So it's not perfect, but I think it's still good enough to keep. And a Guardian Idol's nice too. So play that on two. Maybe cultivate on three still. Opponent's got the Beast Caller. And this will also enter untapped since we were on the draw. Although if I cultivate, I can just scry with it afterwards instead. Opponent does the same. Could also just play Volo, although it's a bit vulnerable to removal, so I would prefer to develop my mana first, despite the Spark Double being quite tempting here. So we'll get a forest and an island. And then scry with a crossroads. And I don't think I need to keep another land on top. Although it wouldn't hurt. Sure. So next turn we have enough mana for Arbiter. And that can make it easier to deploy Henge. Although we're taking quite the beating in the meantime. The negate would be nice to keep up this turn. Although if they kill Arbiter, it's probably going to be too slow to get going. So I could see discarding it. And then now the Partners doesn't have any power, so it cannot distribute any additional counters. Defiler, okay. That can grow their team pretty quickly. So the Partners can still provide value. So that's going to give Defiler haste, hit us for 16. Yeah. So... What needs to happen here? I need to draw into maybe like a bounce effect, a mana war, to bounce some opposing creatures back. Can start with Henge. That costs me two mana. Don't know if I have time to deploy Henge. So maybe Arbiter needs to attack first. And then I just need to naturally draw said uh, mana war. Found a Silverback Elder. Can maybe gain some life back. So we've got two and three mana. Can add four mana with the uh, Organ Hoarder, perhaps. And then let's say we do play Silverback. I'll have two mana left, so that's not enough for anything. Spark Double to copy Arbiter. Wouldn't be terrible. So maybe that still keeps us in the game. And then I can play a Risen Reef as a Chum Blocker, for instance. If I go with Henge first, I can still Spark Double. And gain two life. I think I prefer the extra blocker. Alright, Junk Winders. Potentially a way to stabilize. Uh, we've got 2, 3, 4. Don't really want to discard Henge, so maybe Moldrifter. As much as it pains me, we have Henge for card draw. And then we can shrink down the other creatures here, so double Arbiter is actually pretty good. And then play Risen Reef. Which can trump if needed. 
All right, let's see if we are still dead. Bar class. The filer triggers. That's probably already enough here. This tramples for five, so I have to chump, chump, and then I'm still dead. And a fight rigging can trigger right away. All right. GG's. As I feared, our hand was just a tiny bit too slow. Although the Arbiter almost uh, managed to stabilize us. GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Tatiova, blue-green ramp, so a scary deck, but we have a decent hand. We'll need to find another blue source eventually, but Cold Steel can make at least blue mana for Volo on three. Don't expect a ton of interaction, but opponent's deck can certainly go over the top of our synergies eventually. Turn one goose was nice. Opponent may very well have a counterspell available. Could play Mirror, but the problem now is we won't have blue mana for uh, Volo since I don't have Cold Steel in play and we've used our food token from Goose. So I think just playing a Cold Steel Heart is still better here. And pass it back. Possible our opponent does have a counterspell in hand. In which case we can wait on Volo, just play Mirror. Could also be one of those instant speed, sacrifice a land, get two more type of deals. But uh, I'll play it safe. Play Mirror, and then next turn, Castle is also active. And if they ramp here with Harrow, like we suspected, and play Tatiova, we can just steal it with a Mind Flayer. Opponent turning out Fabled Passage means they probably don't have a ton of other lands in hand, since they would typically want to leave that until after Tatiova's in play, but of course they don't have to sacrifice it yet. Alright, so... Could pass and have turned Dream Eater to bounce. Could get Volo countered, and we'll be able to replay it pretty soon. Seems fine. And then let's see if we can use Castle here. So this makes a ton of green. Can play Volo, and then still potentially have mana for something else. Opponent fetches with Passage. And a Pact of Negation to counter, fair enough. So our opponent's going to be locked into paying for that. And we can still play our Fungus. And replay Volo next turn with ease. Yeah, Pact of Negation is one of those cards that's probably overrated a little bit in Historic Brawl. There may be decks where it's good enough, especially combo-oriented decks, but uh, in my experience it's not that amazing. So play Volo and then we can uh, evoke a Moldrifter. Sounds like a good time. And our opponent has seen enough. Too much value. I can understand. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Galia, so red-green aggro. I've got a turn one mistake, although somehow don't have an untapped green source, so probably still a keep. Play Mystic on two, Vol on three, should still work out. And Mirror doesn't seem necessary. Opponent's got a turn one Pelt Collector, always a great start. So this will enter tapped. And then can give Volo a try. If I play Jewel Thief, then 
I guess we could play Hydra on the following turn already. Thanks to the treasure and castle. So, that's the more conservative play. That's less vulnerable to removal. Of course, they could still kill the elf, but they're less likely to. And then if I wait, I can also maybe protect Volo with the safekeeping now. So, sure. Play Jewel Thief and pass. Also just a decent blocker at the moment. And we'll keep up safekeeping by leaving the Mystic untapped. Bolt Hounds can pump the team. So I'll just block the Bolt Hound and take six. And then I guess we'll try Volo first and then safekeeping to protect it and wait on Hydra. And Jewel Thief can attack. Okay. Opponent's got their sights on Volo, but actually kills Jewel Thief. That's fine. I'll take a hit from Gali and Pelt Collector if I get to keep Volo. Bowen Courier. And a Servant of the Scale. No respect for Volo. Can block Courier. And now double Hydra. Using Castle. Should help us stabilize nicely. So what do we want to get? Just a uh, shock lands. So we do and draw it. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play facing Jada, Angel, Tribal. All our hands got potential. Some nice acceleration. And then Spark Double, always exciting alongside Volo. So can uh, play into the north. Opponent's got the mana tithe. Wow, nice. Yeah, one mana counter spell in white. Pretty effective here. It's gonna slow us down by turn. Although I can still play Signet and then either grow spiral or negate. So I'll take two. And a Faceless Agent, also an Angel. Found a Crater Hoof and a Mystic. Well, time for Volo. And hope it survives. And then the plan is going to be to eventually play a Crater Hoof to kill the opponent on the spots after making mana with Elvish Mystic. I hope the opponent doesn't kill us in the air in the meantime. So, to spark double or not to spark double? If I just go Mystic and Sliver, then that's essentially plus four mana. And then next turn, double Crater Hoof could already be game. So I think I sadly give up on spark double here. Since there's a chance that if I play Spark Double, I'm not going to get another turn if they play enough Flyers. And during Angel, that's the one that prevents them from losing the game. Which is not what we wanted to see, although Mana War times two can maybe come to the rescue here. So now Spark Double on Volo should be fine, and then Mana War bounces their entire team. Um, can we keep up Negate as well? Doesn't seem to be the case. So Sweeper would hurt, but um, I think this is still probably fine. Could also just play Mana War, bouncing two creatures, which may be enough. 
and then we keep up negates. It's not as exciting as getting a spark double in play. So not going for the optimal play just to see how big the numbers can go with Crater Hoof. Bounced all the opponent's creatures, so we set them up perfectly for a board wipe. And Janna, that's fine. And protector shields, that's fine too. Alright, time to hoof. Hopefully your opponent stays to see the numbers. Smash. And hopefully they let damage happen. Alright. Well, that was certainly quite satisfying. Alright, so we got to see our Volo deck in action. And oh boy, we definitely had some spicy games in there. And the Spark Double certainly left an impression. What a card alongside Volo. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.